się chyba. Nie tak wysoko, że wypadajcie w kadr. A ta iglica czy coś jest? Kan u was wydzielcie uh, tam, a mogę gladywać to w kadr. Widzicie, kiedy swet to się chwyt na gry. Nie, nie, nie swet nada. Ej, to nada. A stop te swet, a stop te swet. Tam popróbuj wydawać z problemu. Hello everybody, Steven, Ulua, Jare, uh, Vanessa, Stella, uh, Chris, Plutonic, Odebumi, Rochelle White, Ify, Chris, Osas, Vam nožin, da? No, što bi tam ne bila u regulator v atoplenje, što bi, ne, što bi drugoj stene ne bila vidna, taka vidna. Okay. Please go invite your friends, go invite your family. Go invite everybody that you care about. Слишком много мест над головой. So, go invite your friends, go invite your friends. Вы уже потрогали? Осветите экран. Go invite your friends and uh, let's start the, the revolution today. So, this is the new series that we are starting today. Go invite your friends. This is a new series that we have. The series is going to be called The Prosperity Gospel and the God of Mammon. That is the title of the topic in general, the series. So the Prosperity Gospel and the God of Mammon. But the topic of today is... But the topic of today is the prosperity gospel. Uh, sorry, that is the series. But the topic of today is why prosperity gospel is not the gospel. Why gos prosperity gospel is not the gospel. Now, I'm going to start by showing you some video. I'm going to start by showing you some videos. So, and then from there, we will take it on and uh, we'll begin to talk about why prosperity gospel is not the gospel and that uh, and the prosperity gospel and the and the god of mammon and there have been a lot of talks about the prosperity gospel these days and you know what i'm talking about there has been a lot of a lot a lot of uh problems in especially in nigeria in africa about this false gospel the God of Mammon has hijacked the church in Nigeria. Now, why have I decided to tackle this question? Because there are two gods. There is either the God of God Almighty or the God of Mammon. So, so hello.
Сейчас ничего не включено, просто на весь экран, вот так. Окей, okay. вы уже сделали на весь экран? Я тебе сказал, упражняйся, не надо это все на весь экран идет, а на весь мир идет. Вы уже на весь экран сделали? Давайте на весь экран. Sorry, guys. Окей, okay, here we go. Let's have, a video. Let's have a look at this video. And then there were 12 baskets extra. I asked my children uh, who got the 12 baskets. Uh, one of them Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 7 Ecclesiastes 1 verse 7 says all rivers run to the sea and the sea is not full why? where the river is coming from that's where it's going to go back to a couple of years ago we were discussing the story of the boy who gave Jesus Christ five loaves of bread and two fishes and then there were 12 baskets extra. I asked my children, uh, who got the 12 baskets? And one of them, very intelligent, said, ah, there were 12 apostles. <laughs> and so each apostle got a basket. I said, you must be kidding. There were 12 baskets so they can carry the 12 baskets to the boy's house. The one who gave, who will get. Stop. <clears throat> now, now, this interpretation that we just got from Pastor Deboye here about 12 baskets, he translated it very well that the boy who gave the seed should be giving the people, Jesus and his disciples, must return the 12 baskets back to the boy who gave the seed. But unfortunately in Nigeria today, the pastors are not returning the leftovers and the abundance that the church has. They are not returning it back to the, to the people who give. So if to use this logic, the churches and the pastors are actually supposed to be taking care of all the members who give any seed. Anybody who has ever sown, anybody who has ever given anything, should be given. The church must make sure that all the abundance that the church has, that they are giving it back to the church. So, but if they are not giving it back to the church, it means that the very same word that Pastor Debo is talking about, the interpretation is wrong. Uh, but the interpretation might be right, but unfortunately, they are not practicing what they are teaching. Let's hear that thing again. God then said, all right, now, you've done your part, let me do my part. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply your seed. There are many of us who think that we can just sit down at home and hear all the sound. Like uh, they are hearing now in Nigeria. <laughs> it is not quite the same thing as coming to 
the altar. Verse 7, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 7 says, All rivers run to the sea. And the sea is not full. Why? Where the river is coming from? That's where it's going to go back to. A couple of years ago, we were discussing the story of the boy who gave Jesus Christ five loaves of bread and two fishes. And then there were 12 baskets extra. I asked my children, uh, who got the 12 baskets? And one of them, I very stop. intelligent, said, ah, they are what? I want you to hear the story again. So listen to that story again. The boy that took the, that gave the bread, the broken bread, the piece of bread, the two pieces of bread, I mean, uh, bread and fish to the disciple for the miracles. So the miracles took place. So the, the man of God, Gio, is asking who gets the remnant of the 12 baskets that were left? Now, from this message, he's saying it is the boy that's supposed to collect the remnant. So if it is the boy that's supposed to collect the remnant, why are we not doing that in the churches today? Why are the people who are giving the seed because it's the boy that gave the seed. Why are the people who are giving the seed today are not being enriched? Why is it that they are becoming poorer? Why is it that the pastors are not returning to them every all the abundance that is coming to the church? But instead of that, we are using it to build three kilometers by three kilometers. We are using the abundance of the church to build universities. We are using the abundance of the church to build cities. But we are not enriching the ordinary people. Let's hear the story again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 7, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 7 says, All rivers run to the sea, and the sea is not full. Why? Where the river is coming from? That's where it's going to go back to. Stop. Where the river is coming from is where it's supposed to go to. So if the people are giving money and offering, it means the abundance of it, the prosperity and the riches that are in the church, they are supposed to be distributed to the people. And that is what we saw in the Acts of the Apostles. In the Acts of the Apostles, we saw that actually all the money that were collected by the Apostles, they distributed everything to all the members so much that there was nobody who was lacking. But what do we see in Nigerian churches today? Nigerian churches, it is the geos that are becoming rich, not the people. According to this story, it is the small boy who gave the fish and the bread that became rich. According to the, 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 the geos interpretation, it is the boy that became rich. But today it is the geos that are becoming rich. And if the Ecclesiastes is saying where the water is flowing from is where the water is flowing back to, but if it's the money is coming from ordinary people, it's supposed to flow to them. But no money is flowing to ordinary people today. It's flowing to the GOs and to the ministries, to their ministries. So what is, has happened to us and the gospel? What has happened to us and the gospel is that in Africa today, the God of Mammon, the God of Mammon has hijacked the church. The prosperity gospel and that we are preaching in Africa is not benefiting Africa, it's not benefiting our people. So, and the gospel, prosperity gospel is not the gospel at all because it's robbing people. We are using the prosperity gospel to rob the people and enrich the few GOs, the few men of God, the few no, you know, bishops and the senior pastors. They are the only ones that are being enriched while the ordinary people are being impoverished. Let's continue. A couple of years ago, we were discussing the story of the boy who gave Jesus Christ five loaves of bread and two fishes. And then there were 12 baskets extra. I asked my children, uh, who got the 12 baskets? And one of them, very intelligent, said, ah, there were 12 apostles. <laughs> And I understand that boy, that, that man that is very intelligent, that said, if there are 12 uh, baskets and there are 12 apostles, that, that is, apostles will distribute among themselves. Because that is exactly what he had seen. 
the geos doing, the bishops doing. That's why he answered like that. That is what all the pastors and the leaders in Africa are doing. He has, the reason why he answered like that is because that is the only thing that is known to him. Not just the pastors in Africa distribute the leftovers, but even the obas, the chiefs, the politicians, the only thing that is known to our people is that you are the one that is in charge. You collect all the remnants. All the goodies are for you. You are the one who collect them. But in the Bible, what the Bible says is that all the things that they brought to church were distributed to all the members such that there was no one who was in need. The apostle never collected everything to themselves. And G.O. is preaching right and he said, no, the person who gave it is the one who is supposed to receive the leftover. He preached right, but the practices is the opposite. That is the problem in Africa. Because all the people who are giving, they are still remain poor. In fact, they are poorer now than 30 years ago when all these churches came on, came on board. Each apostle brought a basket. I said, you must be kidding. There were 12 baskets so they can carry the 12 baskets to the boy's house. To the one who gave, who will get. Stop. And I said, give. But the, the whole idea why Gio is preaching this message is so that you will give again. And the people are not questioning Gio and say, ah, okay, we have been giving now. Where have the baskets been going? But the reason why he's preaching this message is that you should give again. It's for him to, it's for the church to be able to extract more money from you again. And the people never question the pastors and say, ah, wait, oh, if we, if the man, if the boy gave the two uh, uh, fish and bread and got immediately 12 baskets. Ah, everybody will do that now. But we got it back immediately. But what is happening to us today, why is it that the ones, the poor people who are giving, they are not receiving anything back? With the people, but they are still saying, you know, the 12 basket is taken to the boy, so you better give more. Give, then God will bring. But in this case, it was not God who collected the, rem the remnant. So it is the disciples who collected and took to the boy. So it is we, our, we are the disciples, we are the man of God, the man of God, we are supposed to be the one to distribute. It is the disciples who distributed to the, to, who took it to the boy. We are the ones who are supposed to take what is left, what this church is gathered, and distribute to the members. But what we tell people today is go and check in heaven, you know, wait on God, pray to God. God will sometimes, I mean, sometimes, somehow bring to you. But in, in the place, Jesus did the miracle, but he said people should go and collect. And the disciples should go and distribute to people. It is the geos who are supposed to see to it that all the wealth that is coming to the church is distributed to the people, especially to the people who give. And that is what we saw in the Acts of the Apostles. The people who brought the thing, the, the things were distributed even to people who didn't have, such that there was no one who lacked. But today we are telling them, go and give, give, bring what you have, and then go back home and wait and drink water. And wait on God. Maybe sometime God will remember you or somehow. God will send uh, favor or uh, what they call destiny helper to you. So, ow. But Jesus didn't tell the boy that God will send destiny helper to you. He told the disciples, collect everything and give to him. And the disciples, in Acts of the Apostles, didn't say, well, all of you are poor. God will send destiny helper to you. The next way for you that God will send destiny helper. No. The disciples didn't pray that God should send destiny helper. They distributed Koro Koro there. Everything that was collected, they distributed and made sure everybody got enough that they needed so much that nobody was in need. And in chapter 6 of Acts of the Apostles, when there was a problem that some people said, our needs, our widows were not take, being taken care of. We didn't get enough. The disciples went and formed a committee. And what is the committee for? For distribution, so that nobody will be left over. So that there will be nobody lacking. But today, even Gio is preaching this message so that people will keep on giving. But he is not setting up the system whereby everybody 
will be taken care of that there will be nobody left in the church that will not have money and that is not taken care of or that is, will not be able to send the children to school or that will not be able to eat. That is what the GO, bishop, senior pastor, that is what we are supposed to be doing. We are not just supposed to be collecting and not giving back, but we are supposed to be seeing more to the fact that because we are not the ones bringing, the people are bringing, but our own is to make sure that there is equal and even distribution. We are, that is the, the most important work of the GO and the pastors and the bishops. To see to it, like in the acts of the apostles, that everything is distributed evenly to people who don't have. Not to just collect, but to distribute. Let's continue. <laughs> it's a personal matter, particularly in the time of crisis. Psalm 41, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 41, verse 1 to 3 says, If you are a giver, when you are sick, God will visit you. That's what he said. He said, He will even make your bed in the time of sickness. Stop. No, that part of it, I've already explained that one another time. I've already explained the meaning of this one uh, because so we're not going to go into this. Let's go back to the notes. Let's go back to, to our note for today. No, before we go to the note, let's do another video. Slay the fellow. So what I'm trying to say, package it to me, what I'm trying to say is that the, the we have crisis today. We have problem in the church today. The God of Mammon has hijacked the church. The church is no more caring for the people like the church in the Acts of the Apostles did. The church is no more caring for the people like Jesus cared for the people. What we are now doing is caring for our own needs and for the for, for the church's need, but not for people's needs. Let me show you. So we are not supposed to be, you know, to be to be taken over, to be overly taken over by uh, our own needs, but for the needs of the people. It is all for the sake of the people that God set up the church, and also it is the people who are giving. All these resources are coming from the people, but the African church doesn't care for people. We care for ourselves and for our pockets, and that is the tragedy that we have today. We should learn how to take care of the people that are put under our care. And that is what the story of, the, of the, you know, Jesus feeding the 5,000 is about. Jesus is feeding the 5,000 so that we will know where his heart is. That God cares for the, for the less privileged people. In the Acts of the Apostles, there was nobody who was in need so that we will know that God cares for the people. Let's have a look at this. Uh, other video here. Because this whole prosperity gospel started from America. It started from America. America, we, you know, started the, 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 the heresy of prosperity gospel and our people in Africa bought into it and it's destroying our continent. It has destroyed the church in Africa. We should forget, we, sh we should have to review what we believe about the prosperity gospel. I don't know if I should you pay that should be for pastor. Okay, let's have a look at this, please. It's, I, I'll tell you, it's not going to be easy for you. It'll be the best thing you'll do for your future. The best thing you can do for your, for your family. Because I'm standing here today because of my, my obedience so long ago. I would not have been in the ministry had I not obeyed God. Now, I'm going to have you pray in just a second. And as you pray, God's going to talk to you. And when he talks to you, I'm going to have you come down here and sow a thousand dollars in the Lord's work. <laughs> sow a thousand dollars in the Lord's work. And I'm telling you something. God already has placed the thousand dollars in your hand. You have it someplace. Now, when this video was made, this wolf is all about fleecing the flock. When somebody made this video two, five years ago about Benny Hinn, or not two, one year or two years ago, everybody was saying that that guy was an antichrist. 
Because he was saying this is fleecing of the floor. This guy is a thief. He's stealing from the people. Everybody was saying, why should you say that? Why should you call them a thief? Why should you say he's fleecing the people? That this is an error. This is wrong doctrine he's preaching. A crime doesn't be poor name. This is the wrong doctrine he's preaching. This is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody was attacking the person who made the video. Just like they were attacking me when I was talking. But the real th truth is that today, Benny Hinn himself has repented. Benny Hinn himself has repented of the wrong doctrine that he was preaching. Let's continue. I know you have other plans for it, but God has just changed your plans. Benny Hinn changed their plans through the use of manipulation, hypnosis, and deception by selling them false hopes. As if you put it in the Lord's work, he will so abundantly bless you. Everything he said was a lie. There are no scriptures teaching if you give 1,000 God a seed offering that you guaranteed to be abundantly blessed. If that was the case, then why don't Benny Hinn give $1,000 to all the members in that room so he could be abundantly blessed and never have a need for your money? Benny Hinn would never do that because everything he said was a lie to tickle your ears while filling you with false hopes. You see, this is now Benny Hinn himself is saying he is sorry that that was a lie and that he has taken the gospel to, to the extreme and that the prosperity gospel is a lie and he's now repenting for it. But a whole continent of Africa has been built on this lie. Or the whole continent has been built on this lie. A whole country has been destroyed because of this lie. So what should we now do? The whole country is destroyed because of this lie. Now he's repenting, but the whole country is destroyed. Somebody's country has been destroyed just because of the lies that he preached. Let's continue. Get you out of that miserable debt you're in. Listen, people, don't be so foolish to believe if you give $1,000 to Benny that the father will cancel financial debt in your life. Why don't you take the $1,000 and pay your bills? There is no such thing as debts being removed miraculously. Stop allowing these wolves to mislead you with fairy tales. You're in debt because you're an irresponsible, reckless spender. The devil has nothing to do with your bills slash debts. He'll get you out of that bondage you're in. All you gotta do is obey and obey now. Christ never charged people $1,000 or any amount of money to heal the sick or help his people. What you're witnessing in this video is a con artist that work fleecing the poor out of their money. You can't buy healings or blessings from the Father. The Father don't need your money. You mean to tell me things got so bad in heaven that the Most High is now charging people money before he could help them? Don't be deceived by this devil named Benny Hinn. Many in attendance at this fire conference came forward to sow their thousand dollar gifts into the work of the ministry, knowing that their seeds of faith would be used to reach lost and suffering people around the world with the saving and healing gospel of Jesus Christ. Before praying over the people's sacrificial investments into the kingdom of God, Pastor Benny Stop. reminded them... You hear what they say? They say you invest into the kingdom of God. But God will never bless that. That is why all of us have been, many people have been giving, all of you have been giving all this money to the kingdom of God, so to say, all this while, but it ends up in the pocket of the man of God. And your money is not multiplying, it's only decreasing. Because God can never stand by a lie. God cannot stand by deception. God cannot support deception. That is deception, that's false gospel. God will not support false gospel. And that prosperity gospel is not the gospel at all. There is no gospel like prosperity gospel. It is a gospel of deception and lies. That their obedience was the key to positioning themselves for the coming wealth transfer. People listen, and listen carefully. There is no such thing as a coming wealth transfer where all of God's people are going to miraculously become rich and wealthy overnight. The wealth transfer doctrine is absolutely ludicrous. This is a false teaching being perpetuated by many prosperity preachers to get you all excited while making you believe there is coming a day when you'll have all the riches you desire. 
There is no biblical record of such an event being foretold to come or what you need to do to prepare for it. Stop believing the lies of Satan. I'm telling you what God did for me. This is the truth. It's what happened to this guy right here. Stop. See money. These are shakes. These are shakes. See cash. Shake, uh, uh, shakes in this man's hand. But it is your shake. And he's saying it is the shake of the people he took. He took it from them. But he is saying God did it for him. No, the people did it. You, you screwed the people. You fleeced the people. You took it from the people. If it is God who did it for you, so why are you collecting again from the people? Why don't you just distribute money that you have, that God already did for you, and distribute it to the people? If you really believe that blessings come through giving, prosperity comes by your giving, why don't you go and be giving to everybody in the hall? So that you will begin to receive more. Why is it that you have to collect the little they have? But when Jesus collected the little that that little, that little boy had, when he collected the two fishes and the five loaves of bread, the, there were two, 12 baskets left over. And all the 12 baskets were returned to the boy. He got prosperity immediately. He got multiplication immediately. But you go home with the people's money, with all the checks of the people, and the people are left with nothing. And you tell them to be waiting on God. Till when? And God never supplies because God will never support a lie. When things looked impossible, God did it. Did it beyond anything I could have believed for. But the thing is this, it's obedience that matters. It's obedience that matters. But I just don't like Benny Hinn. Who cares about Benny Hinn? It's obedience that matters. Stop. We say obedience that matters, but not obedience to your word, not to what God said. This is obedience to his word, not to God's word. And now he's repenting that these things are wrong. What about people whose lives have been ruined? What about people who have been impoverished? What about the people who believed in these things? And they are now destroyed and wrecked financially. When Benny Hinn talk about obedience matters, he's not talking about obeying the Ten Commandments of the Most High. Benny wants you to obey the wishes of Benny's lust for money. If you read the Bible, you will know there is no such command from the Father to give preachers $1,000 offerings in exchange for miracles, blessings, and riches. Benny Hinn never teach people about the importance of obeying the Ten Commandments. 95% of people in these prosperity churches are on their way to hell because they're not born again. Christ didn't come here to die to make you rich and wealthy or so you could buy a new house and car. You to repent from a sinful life, come to Christ and obey the Ten Commandments of the Most High. The more you give your money to these worlds, the more you will become poor, needy and fall deeper in credit card debt. So you obey God. The gospel. It's the gospel. Now some of you sitting in your seats, if you're going to give a thousand, God will speak to you about that amount, and you just obey him. 500, 200, 100, whatever. 500, 200, 100, whatever. 500, 200, 100, whatever. Obey God. Now, right now, everyone lift your hands and lift your voice. You see the trick they are using? <laughs> Five minutes ago, he said, one, yeah, God told him that it's 1,000. After he had collected all the 1,000, and he discovered that not everybody there in that hall has 1,000. Can you see the crowd? 1,000, 1,000, by, let's say, 1,000 times. That's 1 million right there, or almost 100,000. Oh, 1 million. That's 1 million. What about if there are 10,000 people in the hall? That's 10 million. But he discovered that, he said God told him, oh, that you give $1,000 each. God told him, I said, obedience. Then later on, when he said that, I see some people who didn't come forward for $1,000. Who didn't have $1,000? Now he's saying whatever. You see the manipulation that these people, now he's repenting, repenting of it. You see, if, why is he repenting? It's because there are people who are criticizing him like this. Because there are people who are exposing him. 
Because there are people who are exposing his lies and deception. That is why he's repenting. But in Nigeria, we put taboo on people and say, don't talk about the God himself will expose them. God himself will do it. God himself will change them. God himself, don't talk about the geos. Don't talk about the Touch not my anointed. Touch not my If not because he's been criticized, he will not come forward to tell us it's a lie. And all the repentance that are happening in Nigeria now, it is only because somebody has criticized them. It's because of this criticism that people are changing. If you keep quiet, evil will prosper. Evil will continue. And all the people who are saying, let God do it, God is, has put you here to do it. You know, God is not going to do what you are supposed to do. And now that, when, like I said, when this video was produced, Everybody who didn't hear the... Because that time there was no repentance from Benihi here. Everybody was thinking that it is the person who made the video that is in error. That we who are criticizing, we are the Antichrist. Until the men themselves begin to come out and repent. Now that the men are coming out to repent, who is the Antichrist? It means they are the Antichrist all along. Not the ones who have seen the light and exposing the darkness that are the Antichrist. No, they are the voices of God. That is why all of us must begin to speak so that we will make the world a better place and we'll be able to bring the real gospel back to our continent. I'm praying the Holy Ghost. There's an anointing here. Now, Lord, I'm asking you what you did for me so long ago. Do it for the people, Lord. Bring the people out of debt. Break this curse. Anymore. How did debt become a curse when people made the choice to go into debt <laughs> by buying things with credit card that they cannot afford? <laughs> now you are telling them they are already in debt. Now you are telling them to bring one thousand dollars again so that you will break the curse. I mean, what is happened to us? Why is it that we cannot use our brain to say that I'm already in debt now? If you want to help me out of my debt, you don't say I should bring another $1,000. You should give me money. But the people are already in debt and you are putting them into more debt. You are putting them, you are putting them down into the hole of debt even more. And you are saying they should bring the $1,000 and then later on you went to 5000 5, I mean 500 then 200 any amount you have, then you are now breaking the spirit of debt. How can you break the debt, the cost of debt when the pit is people's choice. People themselves have the wrong, maybe some of them have the wrong uh, spending habits. You need to teach them how to get into how not to get into debt. You need to teach them how to get out of the debt. You need to teach them the loss of money, not take their money. And after paying for after praying for that for them like this, after this thing, Benny Hill himself came out and said he is in debt, he cannot pray for his real estate. And he's now going on television, please help me pay for my own real estate. But you are the one who is breaking debt now upon everybody's life. Why can't you break the debt upon your own life? Somebody from Nigeria had to go come and pay $400,000 or so for, for, his, for his real estate something. And then he came out again and said, oh, we have debt for TBN television, we cannot pay for our television something. Somebody from Nigeria again came and gave $1 million. You know, the country that is already impoverished and he's taking it from the poor countries. And then now he's coming to repent. This is the turning point. This is the day of deliverance. Stop. Everyone who attends these kind of churches will remain in debt because what Benihin is saying doesn't happen. How could you e pray your bills, debt go away? Maybe in Africa you could say those stories can happen, but in the West, <laughs> your debt are there and the banks are after you, yet he can't save his own marriage, not just marriage, but even his own mortgage, you can't save it. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, and to hands and praise him. Amen. And you in your homes, your office. Obey God. Just obey God. Stop. Obey. 
Obey God means <laughs> take the 1,000 that are sent to me. <laughs> are you the God? Why should I, even if I want to obey God, let me go and give it to the orphanage. Even if I want to obey God, let me go and give it to the widows. Even if I want to obey God, let me go and give it to the ones in prison I mean, who cannot pay for their hospital bills, who cannot, who are in crisis, who are hungry, who cannot have food to eat. Let me go and obey God by taking care of the people who cannot pay for their school fees. But they are one obey God means give to me. And now, whatever you want in the world, do not negotiate with the Lord. Don't argue. I know you don't because you love him too much to argue with him. God is talking to him. Because you're facing a problem and you're facing a, a, a situation. Now it's time for you to obey. You can, you can sow your seed through our website. You can sow your seed by calling the ministry lines. Don't be suckered by Benny or follow any of his instructions. He just got finished telling you debt was a curse. Then on top of that, he is requiring you to use your credit card to give $1,000 or whatever amount you can. Stop, if stop. You look at... okay. uh, let's go back a little bit. Okay, don't be, don't be deceived by Benny Hinn or follow any of his instructions. He just got finished telling you that debt was a curse. You see, people who are not going to church, they use their brain. Or the people who, who are not Christians, I thank God they, they, they don't go to these churches. They use their brain. Because the man was just saying it was a cause for you to be in debt. And he was breaking the cause. And now he's telling you again to use that same credit card that got you into debt in the first place. And use it and, <laughs> and incur more debt. Go and use your credit card to incur more debt on yourself. Then on top of that, it's requiring you to use your credit card to give 1000 or whatever amount you can. If you look at the image, it shows the donation section of his website. And he has to be to him. Notice, to give, you must use a credit card. Which means Benny Hinn doesn't care about your debt. Even though, you see, he doesn't care about your debt because he's putting you into more debt. He doesn't want to help you, he wants to get from you. That is what prosperity gospel is all about. They don't want to help you, they want to get from you. Even though you are in debt, he's telling you to give money you don't even have, which will increase your debt. Stop giving <laughs> to these people. Dollars or whatever amount you can. If you look at the image, it shows the donation section of his website. Notice to give you must use a credit card, which means Benny doesn't care about your debt. Even though you're in debt, he's telling you to give money you don't even have, which will increase your debt. Stop giving these devils your money. But I want you to do it now. But I want you to do it now. Stop. You see what they say? I want you to go and write credit card right now. Then later on, they will tell you, well, you did it yourself. It's your free will. You did it. We didn't force you. But this is manipulation. This is brainwashing. Do it now. But why now? Because you are still under emotions now. You are under feelings now. So while you are still under the feelings, go and be manipulated. But I want you to do it now. But I don't want you bringing it in because when you mail it, the anointing won't be there. What? The anointing is here now. <laughs> Never so... Never so seed. Stop. You see, people don't have the fear of God. Yeah, I want you to mail it right now. It's not saying so that you don't forget. It's not saying so that, you know, you don't think. You don't succeed in thinking. He's saying because when you mail it now, the anointing will still be there. Because the anointing is here. He's trying to manipulate people because people like the word anointing. People like those kind of words. So he's saying when you go to mail it immediately right now, the anointing will be there. If you want to do it tomorrow, the anointing will not be there. So you must go into debt right now. He's pushing you into debt. That when the anointing has lifted. Because the anointing prepares the soil for the seed. People sometimes say, well, I'll send it. You send it. Often the, the anointing is absent and it's not enough. It will not produce. See, when you have a word, you do it right there. Because when the anointing is released, Stop. the seed. When you hear the word of God, you do it right now. Why is it that it's only regarding the money you have to do it right now? 
When you preach about other subjects, you don't tell people to go do it right now, to go and perform the word right now. But when it pertains to money, they have to do it right now. <laughs> we'll push with life. Can you <laughs> She make it. <laughs> oh, madness, Christian. You see, that's what prosperity gospel is. Prosperity gospel has just run, has just, it's just become madness. It has just destroyed our people. This so called prosperity gospel is destroying our country. It's destroying our country. We are destroying, we are destroying our continent. The prosperity gospel is messing up the whole thing. Okay, let's have a, let's have a look at another one here. Every Sunday, the Reverend Creflo Dollar packs it in under the World Dome, his 8,500-seat church outside Atlanta. The pews are filled, and so are the donation plates. The Word of God is the gateway to the world of wealth. The man whose last name literally means money in the United States often suggests to his 30,000 parishioners the more they give, the more God will deliver financial blessings to them. Which is uh, basically the Christian gospel turned on its head, turned upside down, and it's uh, to honor Creflo Dollar and not so much about honoring God. Despite his critics, Dollar's popularity and wealth have continued to grow, and all that revenue is tax-exempt, with little or no way to know how much he has or how he spends it. What that means is it sounds technical, but what that means is that the church, he doesn't have to give financial information to anybody. Uh, excuse me. Okay, look at, look at this thing here. Pay attention to this word. Rusty Leonard, that's his name, is the founder of Ministry Watch. Now, what does that mean? Ministry Watch, leave it now. Ministry Watch means people who are watching after the churches and ministries so that they behave well, so that they don't miss behave so that they don't misuse people's money so that they don't misuse people's no ch church church's money we need this kind of organizations in nigeria christians must arise to begin to question pastors and you no know, ministries how they spend people's money you know this is what founder of ministry watch we must have ministry watch organizations need now we must have ministry watch organizations all over Nigeria, all over Africa, so that people will be, you know, challenged, pastors will be questioned, so that they will be able to tell us how they are spending the money of the people, so that they will be able to tell us how they are spending the money of the people. Okay, continue. She doesn't have to give financial information to anybody, and so therefore he doesn't. But there are ways to get a glimpse of some of that wealth. From where else? The heavens. This is a satellite view of Dollar's Georgia home worth more than $2.3 million. These New York records show Dollar and his wife sold their Manhattan condo for $3.75 million. And that's not all. Bentleys, Rolls Royces, uh, corporate jets, uh, $23,000 commodes. In 2007, the lavish spending even caught the attention of the U.S. Senate. Just think of a $23,000 marble commode. A lot of money going down the toilet. The Senate Finance Committee launched an investigation into the financial practices of Dollar and five other Chella evangelists, saying it was so taxpayers, quote, should be assured that their donations are being used for the tax-exempt purposes of the organizations, unquote. All of the Chella evangelists objected. But by piecing together what little information the Senate Committee did have, it concluded in 2006 World Changers Church, which has numerous branches, received $69 million in contributions in Atlanta alone. Speaking to CNN in 2007, Dollar denied using church money for personal gain. It's a miscalculated assumption that those things were purchased with the uh, church's money. I, I purchased over 100 cars for people in my congregation, uh, homes for people in the congregation. In 2010, the Senate committee eventually gave up on any regulatory changes. And now, five years later, Dollar is looking to fly higher than ever. Okay. 
Man, this prosperity gospel is a big, big mess. So no man of our. It's a big, big mess. She said, like the post upon us too. I don't even call it post upon us. It's a big mess. Big, big mess. Be spray, be spray, and it's pity. Okay, the the conspect. So let's now go uh, and look at the word of God. Let's go and look at the word of God. Let's look at the word of God. Okay, so let's go back to the message, and uh, you will see that uh, this thing doesn't line up with the Bible at all. This doesn't line up with the Word of God at all, at all. It doesn't line up with the Word of God. The Word of God says something entirely different. The Word of God is saying that God the prosperity gospel and the God of Mammon. So what is now controlling the church in Africa and these so-called charismatic churches or Pentecostal churches is the God of Mammon. The God of Mammon is the problem. The God of Mammon has hijacked the church. The God of Mammon is taking over the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we must now begin to bring the gospel back. So this, this, this prosperity gospel is not what people are talking about. It's not the gospel at all. It's the God of Mammon. So why prosperity gospel is not the gospel? Let's go to the word of God. 1 Timothy 6, 9. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation. This is the word of God. They fall into... Those who desire to be rich fall into fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. The desire and love for money is a common vice that the whole world is susceptible to. We are all having the weakness. We all have the weakness. Everybody mentioned it. Everybody has the weakness. Everybody can the desire and the love for money is a common problem that anybody, if you don't need to be a Christian, either you are a Christian, you are not a Christian, everybody struggle with lust. So, the whole world is susceptible to it. This false love attacks us. Love, not for God, not for people, but love for money, it attacks everybody. It's a first love that attacks all of us. This first love attacks us all because we all live in a world that is material. Because of the God of Mammon who tries to gain and convert us to his cause through his only ambassador, greed. So what we are actually talking about here is greed. And the gospel of prosperity, what people call the gospel of prosperity, is actually the gospel of greed. So our people, our so-called fathers in the faith, the Pentecostal churches in Africa, they are actually having issues with greed. This is greed. And we have to call it the way it is. It is the gospel of greed. It is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel of prosperity is not the gospel at all. It is the gospel of greed. My attention today will be drawn to the so-called prosperity gospel as it is. It, 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 as it is become known in the charismatic circles. 
This is vital because people become what they hear. So if error is spreading for so long, it will produce the expected result. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. It is about seeking the kingdom of God first, not prosperity. Prosperity will come, but we don't seek after it. We don't put it, we don't emphasize it. We don't emphasize prosperity. We emphasize the kingdom. Hence, someone has to stand up and speak out the truth. The most common mistake of the, pros of, of the prophets of, the, of this message is treating it as a doctrine or an old gospel. That is the biggest problem we have. People thinking that that is a whole gospel, a prosperity gospel. There is nothing like prosperity gospel. The only gospel we have is the gospel of the kingdom. So the, the biggest problem is treating it as a doctrine or a whole gospel rather than a benefit. Prosperity is only a benefit of the kingdom of God. When you preach the kingdom of God, prosperity might come to you. God might bless you with money. It's a blessing. It's simply a blessing, but it's not a gospel. So there's nothing like prosperity gospel. The gospel is only the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is only the gospel of the kingdom, but not prosperity gospel. Prosperity is a blessing. It's a benefit. Consequences is a consequence. It's a fruit of the real gospel. So God, prosperity is a benefit, consequences, fruit of the real gospel, but not the real gospel. The only gospel we are called to preach is the gospel of the kingdom. Luke 4, 43, but he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. You see, I must proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. This good news means gospel. Gospel of the kingdom of God to the other towns also because that is why I was sent. The phrase prosperity gospel is not the right positioning of the question. We only have one gospel. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to the nations and then the end will come. You see, this gospel of the kingdom, only one gospel we have of the kingdom, the kingdom gospel, the gospel of the kingdom is the only message we all have. It is only this gospel, this gospel of the kingdom that must be preached till the end of the earth. Yes, there are blessings and signs that follow the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. But yet, these are not the gospel on their own and by themselves. Healing is not the gospel. So you cannot say you have the gospel of healing. It is wrong. You have the gospel of the kingdom. Healing only follows. Prosperity is not the gospel. There is no God prosperity gospel. It's only the benefit of the gospel. Blessings. Blessings is, is not the gospel. You cannot have the, I have the gospel of blessing. It is only benefit, a blessing of the gospel uh, that follows the gospel. So, all these things are not a superior gospel, but benefits and attributes of the gospel or characteristics of the kingdom. Luke 9, 1-2, Then he called his disciples together and gave them power and authority over the demons and to, over all demons and to cure diseases, you see, and sent them to preach the kingdom of God. You see, he sent them to preach the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. Go preach the gospel of the kingdom. But even though they were healing, he gave them authority to, to cast out demons, but he didn't, he didn't say, go and preach deliverance ministry or, and to cure all diseases, but he didn't say, go and preach healing ministry or go and start healing ministry or deliverance ministry. He didn't say, he said, no, go preach only one gospel, the kingdom of God. When you preach the kingdom of God, deliverance will take place Healing will take place. These are benefits, consequences, blessings that follow the preaching of the kingdom of God. You only have one gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. He didn't say go and have deliverance ministry, healing ministry, prosperity ministry. Go and have the go and preach only the kingdom of God. It is the only gospel, and all other blessings will follow. But wholeness comes only when we preach the God kingdom. Hence, Jesus only practiced this message, and John got it right. 75% of all the messages that Jesus ever preached is about the kingdom of God. 
It's the only gospel that Jesus brought. It's the only gospel that the apostles preached. The gospel of the kingdom. So we must not begin to call ourselves, you know, all kinds of names. Go prosperity gospel I mean, minister, uh, healing minister, deliverance minister. No, we are all ministers of the kingdom of God. Seek you first the kingdom and all on his righteousness and all other shall be added. Matthew 4, 17 says, From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The only gospel we have is the gospel of the kingdom. Mark 1, 15 says, And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel, which is the kingdom of God, is the gospel. So we are going to show more videos. Going to show more videos so that you will see that what we call the prosperity gospel is a fallacy. There is no gospel like prosperity gospel. The only gospel we have is the gospel of the kingdom of God. But what we have in Africa is deception. It's, so a, it's, the man thing. it's a gospel that makes you to only enrich yourself. It only enriches the so-called men of God. It's not a gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. It's the gospel of enriching people. Okay, let's have a look at this one. My protest. Hello, I'm sorry. Uh, So we want to see another gospel, pre another uh, so-called prosperity preacher in Nigeria, and let's see what they are preaching. They are messing up our people, messing up our people. They are, they, they are, they, you know, they are not helping the matter at all. Uh, so let's let's have a look at this this uh, so-called pastor that is uh, you know is just they are destroying our country. They are the ones. They are the only ones who become rich, but the people are becoming poorer. The people become poorer. The United Arab Emirates. Dear Pastor Chris, I praise and thank God for this media. Can they teach us about tithes, offering, and seed? Is it compulsory to tithe only to the church we belong? Or can we send our tithes to other ministries in other parts of the country? Thanks. Now, we actually also have lots of materials on these subjects. It'll take me a lot more than the little time we have to discuss this. But uh, let me read something to you because of the peculiarity of your question. First Corinthians chapter number 4, and I'm going to be reading to you two verses. But before that, let me remind you of something in your question. He said, can teach us about tithe, offering, and seed. Now, the tithe is one-tenth of all what God blesses you with continually. All your income, all your increase, as you receive, a tithe of it, which is the tenth part of it, belongs to God. Now, he didn't say give it if it's convenient. He's laid a claim to it. He says it belongs to him. Simply put. The other one you said is offering. Now, among offerings, there are different kinds. You have a free will offering, and then you have a first fruit offering. Now, the first fruit offering is different from the tithe. The scriptures show us that. But some people think they're the same. They're not. Well, the, the free will offering is the one you choose to give any time and it's up to you the tithe is not up to you it belongs to God the first fruit belongs to God but your Stop. free will offering is up to you you see all the manipulation that's happening see all the manipulation these people are starting churches to deceive people it is not about the gospel it is not about you it's not about anybody, it's about their deception. First Corinthians chapter number four, and I'm going to be reading to you two verses. But 
But before that, let me remind you of something in your question. He said, God teaches about tithe, offering, and seed. Now, the tithe is one-tenth of all what God blesses you with continually. All your income, all your increase, as you receive, a tithe of it, which is the tenth part of it, belongs to God. Stop. Now, he didn't what he's saying is that it is gross. That you have to give your gross income. <laughs> My God, the guy don't reach you. <laughs> he don't reach there. <laughs> the guy has made money. This guy has collected from people. <laughs> from everything, 10%. From gross. Give your gross. So don't pay for your rent. Don't pay for your school fees. Don't pay for your children's house. Don't pay. bring everything. And when they say to God, they don't mean to go and give to the orphans so, or to the people in the village so, or to your to the people who are suffering. So. When they say to God, they mean to them. So. <laughs> they are the ones who are taking the place of God. They are God's collectors. And they don't return back to you like Jesus did. Because Jesus returned the 12 baskets back to the boy who gave. But they don't return anything to you. Everything is about them collecting for themselves. And they don't care if there is any needy person in the, in the church. Because in the Acts of the Apostle, there was no needy. They made sure that there was no needy among them. But in their churches, wow, there are so many needies and they don't really care. They take everything and they still tell you to go and bring more. Okay. They say, give it if it's convenient. He's laid a claim to it. He says it belongs to him. Simply put. The other one you said is offering. Now, among offerings, there are different kinds. You have a free will offering, and then you so, have a first. I don't have any problem that they say tithe says it belongs to him. But to him doesn't mean to you. And to him doesn't mean to the pastors or to the church. To him means he said, I was hungry. That is him. I was naked. That is him. I was in hospital. That is him. I was in prison. That is him. I was. He told the rich man, go and sell everything you have and give to the poor. Not to the church. Not to the pastor. Fruit offering. Now the first fruit offering is different from the tithe. The scriptures show us that. Some people think they're the same. They're not. Well, the the free will offering is the one you choose to give any time. And it's up to you. The tithe is not up to you. It belongs to God. The first fruit belongs to God. But your free will offering is up to you. You choose. You decide when you want to give it. And how are you going to give it and how much? Apart from tithe, he's still talking about first fruit ought to belong to God. And that means to them. Anything. Africans have substituted God with themselves. Anytime you hear God, they are talking about themselves. And that is the deception in Africa. <laughs> they tell you that it belongs to God. It's about God. But by God, they are meeting themselves. Can you believe how much deception is going around? Everything belongs to God, but God is them. If it belongs to God, tell I me. Mean, <laughs> let's do it the way God said it now. God said that pure religion, pure Christianity is to visit the orphans. And the widows, and the strangers, and the destitute. That is pure religion, pure Christianity. That is what is belonging to God. But when they say belong to God, they are talking about themselves. They have replaced God. They are now the gods. What you're going to give. And then the seed is also up to you. But you see, in all of this, we must always recognize the leading of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit can always and should always guide us, lead us, and tell us what to do, even how much to give. You know, a lot of times we just give Stop. as we choose. But the greater blessings will come. So you should listen to the leading of the Spirit only when it comes to free will of faith. <laughs> but when it comes to time, no, don't listen to the Spirit of leading. Don't listen to the Spirit leading of the Spirit. Though. When it comes to first fruits, don't listen though. To the leading of the spirit. 
So you could, they collect it, they will collect thai, they will collect uh, fourth fruit, they will collect all this and that. They say they could bring the offering again. Ah, 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 bah. Ah, ah. What are you doing with the whole thing? Where is it going? Are you making sure that you are distributing to people, like the Bible says, so that there will be no one that will lack among them? Are you sure that you are using it to meet the needs of the people so that there will be no needy? Um, when you're able to listen to the Holy Spirit telling you what to do, and that particularly applies to the seed. Many times you want to sow a seed for a reason. A seed is that which you give because of the harvest that you want, a specific harvest that you want. And that's what the Bible talks about, seed giving. So, his friend, Benny Hinn, is repenting about this same thing that this man is talking about. This error that they are spreading, the person they are copying is Benny Hinn. It is the Americans they are copying. And the Americans the, that they are copying is already repented. When will your own repentance start? When will your own repentance begin? The other question, is it compulsory to tithe only to the church we belong? Or can we send our tithes to other ministries in other parts of the country? No, you cannot send your tithes to other ministries. You can send your offerings if you want Stop. to. You can give... They don't, he don't spoil business. This man is saying, you cannot give your body as the spirit leads you at all. If it is tight, you cannot be led by God to give it to anywhere. So, it, that, it, you know, they have made their own law that supersedes God's law. So God cannot do anything he wants. God cannot come and tell you now, go and take that body and give to that pastor. Go and take that body and give to that church. Go and take that body and give to your mother. Or go and take that body and give to your village. Go and take that body and give to the widow. Go and take that body. And, even if only spirit tells you, so you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do it. Because it is, it is compulsory. You have to give to them. Ah, 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 Abba. Abba. Wait, what is happening? This is robbery. Daylight robbery. Daylight robbery. You cannot take your money anywhere. Only to them. Ah, oh, to you. <laughs> if whatever seed you want to through other ministries, but the tithes should be given to the ministry in which you function. Remember, when you belong to a ministry, you don't just go there to listen to the word of God and go away. You should participate. You should become a responsible member. You have a duty. Stop. So the only way for you to become a a responsible member is by giving money. Why is it that everything is measured by money? Kilo day. Why is it that everything by money has to be measured? That you know, you have, for you to be a responsible member, it has to be money. What about if you don't have? So all the other things that you have don't matter. You have time, you can use it. You have energy, you can use it. You have kindness, you can use it. You have love, you can use it. But it doesn't matter if you don't give. Oh no, my God, that's too much. Let me read this to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 15, it says, For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Did you hear that? That's what Paul said. It says, even though you got 10,000 instructors in Christ, you got a lot of preachers in town, in the city, you got preachers here and there. You got them on television or on the internet. It doesn't matter. He says, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, he didn't say anything was wrong with them. They're all in Christ. These are all instructors. These are preachers. These are teachers. He says, but you cannot and you don't have many fathers. And then he said, he... So, so why are you connecting that one to money? Paul is not saying, because I'm your father, bring all the money to me now. Paul is not connecting with money. But you are taking it and using it for money that they have to bring all the money to you because you are the instructor and the father. <laughs> I think we have to use, we have to, <laughs> an unmodded, unmodded. you have to use another, you have to, let's, let's go for another video. <laughs> this one is too much. They, 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 they have spoiled town. They have destroyed the city. They have destroyed the gospel. 
We need to, everybody needs to fend for themselves now. We all need to look for God as much as we can. So the, 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 the flu sheet, so the, the power mail, so the, We need to look for God by ourselves. Yes. We all need to look for God as much as we can. Because if you to depend on these people, they are going to lead you astray. And they are leading us astray already. Let's hear what one of Nigerian pastors, you know, radical pastor said. Pastor uh, Tunde Bakare. Okay. And this is another pastor in Nigeria that is criticizing these pastors. He is saying, he said, all general overseers must go to prison. All general overseers must go to prison. That's what he's saying. He believes that all general overseers, why didn't it more? All general overseers must go to prison. All. Why? Because they are collecting all the people's money yeah, and they have used it to, to, to buy private jets. They have collected everybody's money to use it to buy private jets. Let's hear it more. <laughs> Why? And allow God's supplies to go to waste. Such prayers are most free for their complicity. And I'm talking of the men that they call off or whatever you call them. I'm talking of church leaders. If it's most free for their complicity in the role of fear of sanctification of the wrong of political power, which have been done to reach of the whole world, and which the flood of God. Any preacher who takes advantage of the people of God must be sent to prison. If they are using offering to build their own businesses and to build to buy their own jets, they must be sent to prison. He's a pastor too, and you know that is you know that's the reality. Yeah. It must seem idea of what he's saying is that they should send all the pastors to jail. <laughs> all the general overseers should be sent to prison. <laughs> I think I'm going to ask people to call in now. The 
I think I'm going to open the open the line to hear your your contributions because there is no more anything to say about this. Uh, if you have not yet registered for the mentorship program, it is free of charge. It is free of charge mentorship. So I want you to go and uh, check out the. I want you to go and check out the mentorship uh, page. That is sundayadelajablog.com slash mentorship. sundayadelajablog.com slash mentorship. It's for free, and that's where you have step-by-step -step theological <laughs> growth, where you can renew your mind and detox from all the lies that, Ni that Nigerian preachers have given to us. Why prosperity gospel is not the gospel? We are going to be expecting your calls, we, you know, anybody that wants to call and contribute. The prosperity gospel and the God of Mammon, why prosperity gospel is not the gospel. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, success, you want to comment on this. You don't have anything to say. <laughs> I, I want to, by the way, this week, what I want to do this week is that I want to be preaching just one hour and then receive your call, maximum one, another one hour, and that's all. So I'm going to be uh, doing these short, short, shorter call, uh, shorter messages. I'm going to be having shorter messages. So for you people who have been used to me going three, four hours, this time it's going to be two hours. So I'm going to lessen it to two hours. So if anybody wants to call, you have to call on time. And the way to call is to go to Facebook Messenger, Facebook Messenger, Facebook Messenger, Move Agents, Move Agents. Hello? Can you Hi. Yes. Who is calling from where? Uh, this is uh, Adeyinka. I'm calling oh, from sorry. Canada. Adeyinka, how are you, sir? Hey, I'm good, sir. Thank you so much. Um, well, I just let me just say first thing, uh, something before I continue. Yes. Sir. If anyone is on the platform for the first time, I recommend that the person go and listen to paganism, syncretism, and the love series before commenting because you may not see things from the way Pastor Sunday is seeing it or the way others are seeing it on the platform. Please just go and listen to those series before you can be able to comprehend things from our own perspective very well. God bless you. So, sir, Pastor. Yes, sir. Um, you see, people don't know the difference of reading the Bible and studying the Bible. Huh. You see, that is the problem that we have in Nigeria. Let me just say we, because me too, I was there. I've been there before. Thank God for someone like you who opened our eyes to the truth, though it will be bitter. It, you, you can see a lot of people saying, touch not my anointing, touch not my anointing. And some of them will agree with you that though they know that some, some things that they are doing is not right. You understand? Yes. Sir. So, why are they quoting scripture out of context without understanding? He said, I will pray. Uh, King David said, I will praise God with understanding. And then I, 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 I meditate on that word. Then the Holy Spirit made me to understand that I have to understand. I have to do everything with understanding. So, they have to read the scripture with understanding. They have to study it to get the understanding. And people don't know. They just come on the platform and begin to say a lot of things. L just sit down. Meditate. The Bible says uh, Isaac went to meditate on the word of God. We need to sit down, meditate, and study, ask questions. We don't want to ask questions. People just want to go to church. And listen, that's why they are not able to pick the truth together and identify it. They don't know that it doesn't matter who, do, who does it. What matters is that the truth is truth. And the truth cannot be killed. And the truth cannot die, and the truth cannot be quenched, and the truth cannot be defeated. So, people don't know that, but they just want to follow because it's my papa, it's my pastor. No, it doesn't matter, even to God, it doesn't matter who does it. What matters is the real truth. Do you have it? Hold it. Jesus said, that one that you have, hold on to it till I come. And my, my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his deed. God bless you on this. You are really exposing the truth to us. But whether the people, whether we like it or not, we have to accept the truth. Many people are in the dungeon of prosperity gospel, which is not. That is what Paul said. He said, if anyone, even if it is angel, 
that come and say and preach another gospel or another Jesus to you, which is not. He said, don't even listen to it. Let them be accursed. That's yes, what the, uh, Paul said. Yeah. May God help you, sir, for yeah. allowing us to know the truth. God bless you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, let's see if we are going to have other callers. Anybody that wants to call, like I said, the way to call is to go to Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger Move Agents. Move, type the word Move Agents. Move Agents. That's where you call. For the people who are saying I should preach the gospel. So what am I doing? <laughs> is it not the gospel? <laughs> Maybe you think this is not gospel. It is gospel though. <laughs> For those of you who want asking where to get the book in Nigeria, you will see the name Shioma there in the screen. Look at the screen. You will see that uh, uh, it is, you know, the, all the coordinates are there. If you want to distribute the book either from any country, you can also write to dsasbooks at gmail.com or, you know, just go to my blog, sundayadelajablog.com slash books. So that is the way you could, yeah, you could get it. Okay, we have a caller. Hello? 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 Great. Good evening, sir. Yeah, why are you not talking? We they wait for you. Oh, sir, I'm sorry. I, I off my microphone. Okay, okay. We are hearing you now. Oh, sir, I really enjoy Although I came late, but the few I met, I really enjoyed it. And I was so satisfied. Yeah. You know, this is what is going on in our country. And I'm not happy about it. So the way you speak it and the way you explain it is so clear. Wow. It's so clear. So what we are trying to do now is to share it among the Facebook friends. Let this, this message is going far. The Bible says, it said, it said the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence was taken by force. Yes. So these fake prophets and these fake pastors, they are doing their worst. They have no sympathy for human beings like them. They gather together, they will take the money. They will still make the person to suffer. They don't care about the poor. They don't care about the orphanage, just the way you are speaking it. They care for their self, their self. They are buying cars. Buying a jet, building mansion. The other time, my 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 junior sister went to enter university. So my my uh, you know in uh, she was in Ogun State. So I asked her, okay, since it's near near the port, near the school is not too far from there. Let her go and register. When they measure the money, I said, please oh, go back to our state. <laughs> Where am I going to see uh, half a million? <laughs> To see that kind of money, huh? It's so expensive that the poor man, poor man child cannot attend. Them. Yes. Huh? And these are so called men of God, G O, that the G O, General Overseer, indeed. So whether they like it or not, they just said they know their self. They know who they are. They know that they are not the they are prosperity pitcher. That is who they are. See, uh, uh, the, 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 they, are, they are stealing people money with their code using the name of God because people love Jesus, people love God, they don't gather them together. Eh? So, enough is enough. That is what we are saying. Enough is enough. Yes. Whether they like it or not, they are going to step down. Let the, the cattle are going to be set free. Yes. So this is your message that you are preaching now. You don't know how much I appreciate it. That is why I always put you in my prayer. Because I know that what you are doing is only God. It's only God Almighty that can, that, can, that can put this kind of idea, this kind of message. It is not possible for ordinary man to preach this message of truth. And the Bible says when we know the truth, the truth is set up free. And this truth is this true message is going to set the children of God free from the hands of those so-called that the G.O. faith men of God who put on uh, uh, who put on the name of God, whereas they are water than lady daughters. Sir, I really appreciate your work. 
I want you to know that I always put you in my prayer. Because I, I, I have the spirit of truth. All the message you are preaching is so clear and understandable. Yeah. So fire is going to Nigeria. <laughs> this message is going to Nigeria to liberate the children of God. <laughs> enough is enough. These people have made people to suffer. Hmm. They don't care about the poor. It's only them and their family. They are getting richer, richer, richer. The poor are getting poorer. Yeah. People, if you go to Lagos, you see that people are even nearing their church, the beauty, beggars, they are there. They will see drag, they will pass them. Hmm. Hmm. If you are not rich, you can't, you can't sit down in the front. Wow. The front are reserved for, for the rich. It's not possible to see these people. No, if you want to, they have body guys all over there. You can't see them hmm. because they are so afraid. Wow. But this time around, whether they like it or this your message is going ahead and God is taking it ahead, the children of God must be set free. Nigeria has suffered in the hands of so-called men of God. This time around, God has you. And many of me are still coming ahead to do it together, to liberate the children of God. Fire from heaven will fall. Amen. Second Elijah. Hmm. Because I'm people are doing they are divine people people who be they don't care who you are they don't care about you must be they don't have they don't have they don't have sympathy at all at all very sad very sad very you want sad. to see them you can't see them it's it's so hard to see them they are so hard i am so annoyed in my spirit sir i'm sorry yeah. You know, how can you use the name of God? Not one person. They don't have they don't even think about God that created them. So thank you very much, sir. And God will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye bye, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Well, you know, we have other callers coming calling in. So let's uh, see the next caller. Wow. Hello. Hello. Hello, TSA. Wow, is that David? It's been a while. <laughs> TSA, I'm fine. Okay. It's just that most time I'm, I'm not chance to call, but I always listen, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you very much for this topic because I'm so blessed by this topic tonight. And I won't lie you dare say God is really doing wonders. Huh. And the the word you are preaching, they are not going in void because I believe and I know that the fruit are coming out. Amen. Because um to be honest with you, I'm one of the uh the beneficiary of what you are teaching and especially the last series on love. Something happened to me uh, last week. I was coming now I go I went out I'm coming back. You know when I was coming back I just see at the bus stop I see a woman selling seed of corn of okra all those things and if you see the way this woman is she's very very you know that this person the poverty really eats into her mm -hmm. and i wanted to pass her but something just ring in my head that remember you you went out today you go to fast food eat food of almost two thousand to three thousand uh, and this woman have no eating and i just turned back and i went to her i gave her money Hmm. And when I give her money, the umbrella she's using, the umbrella is have scattered. I say, Madam, where can I get umbrella here? And went out to go and buy another new umbrella to wow. give her. And as I'm talking to you, by the grace of God, God has laid into my heart. And I tell her, I say, I can't allow my mom to be selling at the roadside. That means go there and ask her, I want to get you a space that you can sell. And I don't want you to sell in this place. And if you see the way this woman is thanking me, DSA, you see, it was amazed. 
and look at what is happening. Our pastors, they are passing by these people. They are looking at them. They are not doing anything. People that are paying tithes and millions. And they are passing by these people. They are not doing anything. It's the right time. This is the right time that we need to stand up and push up to these fake people. Thank God they are coming out and confessing now. <laughs> and we are know that the fire is already... See, TSA in Nigeria, the fire is burning. I won't lie to you. <laughs> because if you listen, if you interview any Christian now, what you hear from their mouth, it's only the gullible one, those, those are that they are brainwashed and enter deep, that we stand up and defending one to you or one pastor. Understand? Wow. Truth they come. So, the fire, the time is now. The truth is coming to place and it has come and it has come to stay. Because I was very surprised to see people like Michael Coco like, uh, confessing. See people like Benny Hill confessing. People like, uh, you know, I know some have been trying before, and I still see that he made it. So that tells you that there's something that's happening in the body of Christ right now in Nigeria. And we give thanks to God that bring you to bring this uh, change. So I advise everybody on this platform, start touching people's life the little way you can. So that this message that God has given to us, we continue upon it. And I thank you so much, Jesse. And I look forward to more, more of the message to this series finish. Thank you so much. God bless you and your entire team over there. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Tomorrow, the topic... What's the topic of tomorrow? I want to begin to announce the topic uh, of the next day ahead of time. So tomorrow's topic is, uh, uh, I will tell you, so that you get your people prepared for it. We have another caller coming. Okay, but uh, let me see if I could tell you tomorrow's. Uh, okay, tomorrow's message is the prosperity gospel. Uh, no, no, sorry. Why prosperity gospel is wrong? Why prosperity gospel is wrong? That's tomorrow. Why prosperity gospel is wrong? So, if you want to invite somebody, or somebody would like to know why prosperity gospel is wrong, that is tomorrow. Hello? 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 Yes, sir. Who is calling from where? Uh, my name is Al uh, Alex. I'm calling from uh, France. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir, Alex. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. I, I, I so much love this uh, series that you started here today. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh, the, the prosperity, prosperity is not a gospel. Yes, sir. <laughs> I think it, it's, it's just a simple clear some. Uh, uh, word because of the prosperity message they started preaching in Nigeria that was how the whole Christianity changed it's why it don't destroy prosperity in Nigeria now I mean, <laughs> that, that, was how it's, Christianity. That, that, was, that is one of the things that make our people to be more lazy and be, more poor lazy. more lazy and more poor more poor that is that was the problem because I remember vividly at, at, the, at the time uh, late our bishop started this gospel or those times it was not to this extent no, it was not. And everybody now go to church Monday to Sunday to Sunday, <laughs> and whatever you whatever you have, they will take it from you. Sunday to Monday, you keep on <laughs> you keep on putting in, like keep on paying in, into that place a bank that you cannot even see any interest. And you are not working. <laughs> you are not working. It makes every it makes our people to be mostly Nigeria to become lazy, lazy in, in, in everything. Yes. Like I was watching it, there was a video that I even saw uh, on Facebook where uh, 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 Pastor Kumui went to commission a bridge. I said, like my cousin said, said the message, your message has started touching them. Yeah. This is what the masses need. Mm -hmm. Not building a school. Build a road that these people can pass. <laughs> Whether Christian, Muslim, everybody, even believer, everybody. Yeah, everybody will benefit from that. Yeah. That one, it's enough to even preach the gospel. Hmm. Not building a, a building a school that 
the even the common members of the church cannot attend yes. or buying a private jet, buying a mansion that even to even see to even see some papa or geo <laughs> if you don't have tight card you cannot see them <laughs> the criteria to see a pastor is your tight card hmm. if you don't have it most church you can never see them wow i will thank you hmm. i don't my I'm, I'm so happy about this message and I, i'm so happy because god is really using you hmm. i want to watch the video where uh, uh, the, this uh my uh, bishop michael Kongo was saying this tight i think this is the time that they all need to come together to ask for forgiveness from the members yeah. and god will forgive them Everybody, at least let them start showing this love. Like I said, the basic word of Christianity is love. Hmm. That is my whole point of view. If we love each other, whether Christian, Muslim, we can live together, we can work together. Even Nigeria can be more better. Because hmm. they, are, they don't even love, all they love is just me, myself, and my family. They yeah. love. Hmm. Where they have to save for their unborn children. Hmm. Imagine buying, having a jet, even when it, there are people who, who have no, who, there are millions of children who are in the streets, no education. If you give this money to these people and educate them, actually they will, the, the, the property will be eradicated to some extent, if not totally. Yeah. Our, like what, like what the caller just said. Imagine a woman who is selling alcohol uh, in the streets. And church member will pass there. Hmm. Even like what the, the other woman said, to even see your past, see the pastor, the OGO, the escort they have is competing. They are competing with the president of the country. The kind of bodyguard they have. Yeah. I just want to thank God that God, God, God continue to use you to, to as in just to begin to give you more revelation. And that we, we also that is listening to you also be a particular, not just hearing. Jesus Christ, don't, don't just be a hearer, also be a doer Amen. of the word. In that, in that way, we can be able to preach the gospel more. I pray that God continue to bless you and guide you. Let me give room for that for us to call him. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, well, let's hear some more callers. Hello, we have uh, other callers coming in. Some people are angry that I'm preaching this message, but you know the truth has to be spoken. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Is that uh, Mr. Jofiers? Jofiers, doctor. <laughs> yes, sir. I've been listening to you, but this is I cannot call because sometimes I will, I, will, I will share it and, and later I'll come and uh, look at it. Thank you and God bless you. Doctor, my question is that uh, now this truth is coming out, hmm. but the people will still go and be paid this money. I don't know whether it is fear and panic that, that is making the people to be so giving without any reason. Because from the teaching I, 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 I watched today, that means that this prosperity gospel is not helping in the African continent. No. It is making the people poorer and poorer. Hmm. It's making the people poorer and poorer. So now that the truth is coming out from DSAT, I think I have shared this is I have shared a program to say that if you come to my Facebook, the only thing you can see is all DSA. And now people are telling me, ah, what is DSA? What is DSA? People are starting looking inside your review and the people are shaking their head. In fact, I think that in two, three years' time, the whole Facebook will be filled with DSA and the, and the people will be set free. That Amen. is my prayer. Amen. That is God bless you. Thank, thank you, sir. Bye -bye. thank you, thank you. <laughs> wow, well, we pray so. We pray God will answer your prayer. <laughs> we pray God will answer your prayer. We pray God answer your prayer fast, fast. <laughs> yeah. So we are waiting for other callers to come. Uh, so here we are. Yes, uh, we, we need to spread the word. Not just DSA alone. All of us need to spread this word. All of us. Because this is the truth that will set the people free. Hello? Hello? Oh, is that Paul Oyaire? Good evening, sir. Oh, yeah, he's been a long time, oh. 
Yes, yeah, it's been a long time, sir. How are you, sir? We'll give God the glory. <laughs> nice to hear your voice today. Adelaja, Adelaja. Yes, yeah, Adelaja, don't call me. <laughs> we'll give God the glory. <laughs> the, the good news is this. Uh, anybody with, they, they gave us that booklet. Wow. But those type booklet, they meant it for info. Hmm. But God is turning it around for good. Hmm. We have start, we've started a campaign on restitution. Mm -hmm. Because Zakir said that what he collected from people that he restored it fourfold. Let the GO start now, they, if they believe the Bible. So, so we are telling people now that if you have your tight booklet, you have your Shiloh booklet, your fourth fruit booklet. In less than two years' time, the people will start winning long trainer in, in, in Africa <laughs> from restitution. Wow. Last two years, we told them that the sheep will soon go against the shepherd. Hmm. And the whole thing is spreading like wildfire today. Hmm. We have no hand in it, but God is putting them. I told us that Government is not our problem in Nigeria. Religion is our problem in Nigeria. Hmm. Uh, and the very moment we purge religious places from corruption and impunities, politicians will have no hiding place again. Hmm. That the Holy Ghost will come with a fan in his hand and he will thoroughly purge them. So what we are doing now is the purging process. Once we finish purging the churches, the government will have no hiding place and Africa will become heaven on earth. Yes. So everybody should get incited. Like we said before that, this reformation has nothing to do with fasting. It has nothing to do with prayer. Huh. Only truth, which is which has more potent force <laughs> than fasting and prayer. Bakala rabaka sakatandaya. <laughs> Truth will set a nation free. Fasting and prayer will not set anybody free. They use fasting and prayer to hypnotize people. Hmm. Then we organize Shiloh sacrifice, which God said that he has destroyed Shiloh already, and he will destroy every other city the way he has destroyed Shiloh. Yeah. And the Oyedepo is collecting Shiloh sacrifice from poor people. Wretched people that could not see how to eat. And they tell us that this is the will of God. Hmm. For Bishop Mike or Comfort to confess what they are doing, you can see the level of wickedness for over 40 years in Nigeria. The level of wickedness for over 40 years. Hmm. Darkness in the name of preaching the gospel in Africa. My God. For over 40 years, I saw this in Winners. When I left Winners, everybody thought I was on the wrong track. Uh -huh. But everybody under this platform, let them humbly acknowledge that for you to be a reformer, there are some attributes you must have. It takes a lion heart to walk away from those people. And when you walk away from those people, that is not enough. You need to understand that as communication is not new in the society. Hmm. But what makes as communication new is what you can be able to come out with such as communication. Hmm. I was as communicated and I told them that they should never mistake him. They should never underestimate stupid people in any group. <laughs> I was a stupid person. <laughs> they ate our money. And the, the stupidity is speaking out today. Hmm. Say, so how can you tell people to remain in the spirit hmm. and collecting money from poor people, wretched people, that God will give poor people money? Why not wait upon God to receive those money on behalf of poor people? Yeah. And let poor people remain with their money. Hmm. These, people are, these people are just, they are blatantly wicked. Huh? They are just wicked. Sad. Sitting upon destiny, upon generation, 
for over 40 years. Hmm. Over 40 years in existence. The Okongo, Okongo's confession, Okongo's confession is vindicating the movement. Yes, sir. That that is what they have been doing, people, which I saw it with my eyes. Hmm. And I called the pastors in Winners Chapel that this is evil. That this is wickedness. Hmm. And they say, Paul O'Hanera is a stupid person. Ooh. I'm so glad that I'm stupid. Huh. But my, our stupidity is, is producing fruits. It's delivering people. Wow. People should get incited and keep their tight booklets in our dispensation before we die. Restitution <laughs> will be a reality in Nigeria. Amen. So people should continue. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so, so very much. God bless you now. God bless you, sir. Bye. Wow, wow, wow. Restitution is a big one, though. That's going to cause a lot of havoc. But in Nigeria, I don't think the law, the court and the you know the government will take it up. Maybe we'll get there, who knows? Uh, but in the UK and the US, yeah. Hello? Yes, sir. Is that Moses? Good job, sir. Yeah, oh. this is Sonari Waji, sir. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm fine, sir. Yes. I just want to say a very big thanks to you. Hmm. Yeah, I've been listening. I've been a, uh, some time now. I didn't call. But today I said I have to call to tell you what is happening. Now, and, uh, to, it's a testimony. Okay. I told you about the woman that I went to their job and just talk about what you are doing and what is happening. And the woman was just looking at me and she didn't greet me anymore. But yesterday she saw me, she was happy and she hugged me. <laughs> and she said, the message you give to me and you talk about, because I wrote your name for everybody there that they should go to on Facebook to see, to watch it. And the woman just says, it's, it's, it's really it's true because the woman has been brainwashed for a long time. Hmm. But now God has delivered her. And all of them, they just call me and say, how long do you know this man? I say, oh. It's not, it's not a few months you, but I thank God that what he's doing and what you have been doing in my life is so, so precious. And this woman just confessed that it is really a great job that you are doing, hmm. you know? And that is what happened for a lot of people on this platform for the first time. It's not easy for a person who has been in church for 30 years and do the same thing every day. And you just come today and say, no, it's not the way. It's going to find it difficult. Yeah. But just gradually process, it's going to get it done. Even people that, even when I talk about you, they hate me, they say, what is wrong with me? How long have you been in Christianity? What do you know? Now they are just joining me and say, oh, this guy is true. It's really true. We watch it. We do this. We do that. So I just want to say it very thing to you. <laughs> and second thing, just yes. in Nigeria, how do you want Nigeria? How do you want poverty to leave Nigeria? When you help people with just 500,000 that I help you, and in a month, everything that they make in that business that he's doing is going to take you to church. And at the end of the year, he's still going to call you, I can't pay for my short bread. <laughs> I can't pay my school, my children's school fees. And I said, How do you want to pay when the old money goes for tithe, offering, chill offering, all this kind of thing? Why do you go to save? Hmm. You can't save now. That is the problem. And the person you are giving it to at the end of the year, you cannot go back to him or her and say, I can't pay my, my rent, you. I can't pay my shop, this, I can't buy um, uh, goods into my shop. And you are giving your money to him or her. So, but thank God, because I share this message every minute, even I go to Facebook, YouTube, your, your old message, I copy it, I share it on my Facebook. Yeah. So people see me, I have so I said, Larry, where did you get this uh, message you are sharing? I said, Do you watch it? I watch it too. Every day when you share it, I watch it. I say, Okay, thank God. Everybody we get we get delivered by God grace. Amen. So thank you so much, sir. May God continue to strengthen you, sir. Wow, wow, wow. Beautiful. Yes, Beautiful. Yes, sir. Thank well, you so this much. is going to be a very difficult series for the religious people. Because I'm going to tell the truth the way it is. This is just the beginning. Um, actually, some people are saying DSA is on fire today, but this one is actually the soft landing. It's, a, it's an easy start because I'm going to talk some things before the end of this series that, hey, made them take care of. Hello? 
Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Who is calling from where? It's uh, Felix from Dublin. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? Good evening, Pastor Sunday. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. How is everything? Well, we did try our best. I'm <laughs> try my best, though. <laughs> I pray that God will, God, will, God will empower you more. Amen. Because this message is very expository. Hmm. And it is needed because it is the church has been hijacked by these charlatan uh, pastors. Hmm. They are not really pastors. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are as, as the message said this evening, they, they are, they are for, they are, they are greedy people. Hmm. They are greedy people. They are motivated by greed. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so people should. I was looking at some of the comments that people were commenting. Don't be discouraged with that because there's a saying that evil tribe when good men sit back, yes, sir. And do nothing. When, when I saw the video of Pastor Benihin confessing a couple of uh, weeks ago, I, I wasn't surprised because there was a there was a, a pastor in the U.S. Apost I think Pastor Gino Jennings. Okay. He's on he's on YouTube. I think I forwarded it to you sometime ago. Yes, so, I, yes, I know him. Yeah. People like you know, he he, he has he has publicly attacked Pastor Benny He, Crefto Crefto Dollar and, and a host of other pastors that that are preaching this uh, for that preach this prosperity preaching that they are not God sent, they are for themselves. Yeah. So you you shouldn't be discouraged. You shouldn't be discouraged, sir, because I mean we need to separate the the the, the true pastors from the fake ones. Hmm. So that people people can know. Because I think God is cleaning the church because the Bible says that it shall come to pass that judgment must begin from the house of God. Judgment has to start from the house of God because if the house of the, the, the it's, it's unfortunate that the government the governmental system has failed, so the church is supposed to be the last hope of the common man. Yeah. But unfortunately, the church that is supposed to be the last hope of the common man has is, is also following the trend of the politicians. Hmm. Unfortunately, hmm. that is why things are not working in Nigeria in particular and in Africa in general. Because the church is supposed to sanitize. It's supposed to sanitize the the, the 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 entire worldly system, but unfortunately, the fake pastors that are in for greed for themselves are not copying the politicians. They are not competing with the politicians. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. they, they, they forget that there is there is judgment coming, and yeah. God is going to do. Yeah. It's done. So uh, I I. I, I wonder. I, I also saw some couple of weeks ago. I think it was this uh, footballer or ex footballer Samuel Eto went to Libya, paid for uh, I think a whole flight for Cameroonians that were stranded in Libya when the when 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 the when this video uh, was shown on CNN how they are killing Africans in Libya. He paid. He paid from his own pocket. For a whole flight for all Cameroon to be taken home. Wow. And Nigerian is that, pastors. Is that a confirmed information? Yes, it is on it's on, it's, it's on YouTube. It's there. Samuel, Samuel Eto went to Libya and paid for a whole flight hmm. in, in, for, in, in conjunction with the IOM, International Organization for Migration and other bodies to. Make a list of all the cabinets that are there. Then you, you pay for your whole flight. Wow! But Nigerian pastors are there doing nothing. They forget that human beings, assume, assuming it was their, their their children that are stranded in Libya, won't they go and do that? Yeah. Would they go? I mean, there's no empathy from the church. Unfortunately, there's no, there's no empathy. It's so unfortunate that the widows are neglected. The less, the less privileged are not taken care of. There's no welfare system, unfortunately. 
the orphans are neglected. And all these pastors today that are, that are flaunting their way, they attended missionary schools. Missionary schools. Yeah. Missionary schools. I attended a missionary school, a missionary primary secondary school before I, uh, in, in Nigeria. And the, the, the children of the members of this church cannot attend the primary, secondary, or even the, uh, the universities that are set up by these pastors in Nigeria, unfortunately. It's so unfortunate that, in fact, we, we, we missed it. My, my earnest prayer is that God, God, will, God will empower you more as you expose the word of God. This is hard truth, and it's, it's, it's big revelation, and God will, God will empower you more, God will strengthen Thank you, you because it takes Thank a lot of heart to do what you are doing. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank God you. God bless you, sir. All right. Bless you. God bless you. Yep. Okay. Here we go. And uh, uh, like I said, we have the topic tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow's topic is why prosperity gospel is wrong. So if you, you know, have anybody there that is still arguing or that is not clear, tomorrow we are going to be dealing with that topic. Why that prosperity gospel is wrong. So we are going to be examining that tomorrow. So I look forward to, and I hope it will bless uh, a lot of people. Hello. Hello, hello, DSA. Hello, Bridget. Hello, is that Bridget? Yes, it is. Okay, it is me, DSA. Blessings. We are hearing you. Okay. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. This is another awesome topic, DSA. And uh, I just want to say congratulations and God bless things upon you. Amen. Um, this um, message, you're going to be attacked. Yeah. Honestly, I have to tell you. <laughs> but as you know, the truth has to come out, as you said. Yes. And it is time it comes out because this has been going on for so long and people are tired. I, for one, am so tired. I have been to so many of these churches because of my situation. People have laughed at me because of my son and my own uh, problems. So, uh, and then yesterday's message, oh, it took the price. The love series of yesterday was so awesome. It was so awesome, Pastor. And I said to myself, God, you know, when I came across you in October and I listened to you, I said, why is it that this man cannot be the president of Africa? Because you had, there was something that was pushing me to do to your messages. I could not get enough and I was sending it to everybody on my WhatsApp chat. I wanted people to hear the messages that I'm listening to. In this evening, I was talking to you about my, with my sister. She said, oh, this, all that, I said, Rebecca, this is the real deal. This is the real deal. Anyway, so when I, I just finished uh, doing this uh, uh, prophecy thing, and I understood why I was so hooked on you and your messages. I didn't realize that I was getting prophetic revelations about you until I saw this prophecy that I worked on. And I said to myself, God, I thank you because I know you've confirmed my revelations. Do you see? Yeah. God bless you. God bless you mightily. And I'll say it again that the hand of God is upon you. Thank you. The hand of God is upon you. And I want to say also that your books have to be in every language, DSA. Every language. And I want to suggest to you the one language that I would like to see your books in is in Swedish. I know you have it in German and you have it in French, 
that I would like you to have it in Swedish language. And I'm willing I have, I have to a few do of them anything. In... Sorry? I said I have a few in Swedish. You do? Yeah. Thank you. Brilliant. Because I haven't seen any on the, on the uh, Kindle store or uh, Amazon. Yeah, it's there. It might, okay. I, don't know, I don't know if it's on Amazon, but it's there in some printed stuff in Sweden. All right. Okay. That's amazing. That's very good. Because you see, people like, uh, uh, I was listening to some of your, the, the callers. With Paris Embassy, they have uh, what they call the Rhapsody of uh, Realities. And it is in almost every language you can think of. So, and, and, and for me, your books are the best books I have ever come across, DSC. I've only just started my second book. But when I saw the books, I said, something is about these books. Something is about these books. So, I want this, um, and also to tell everybody on the platform that we have to support you in prayers. We really have to support you with everybody on the platform to support your team, to support your family, to support everyone that is connected to you in prayers. That is what I'm feeling. And maybe it's the Holy Spirit telling me, but I have to share this with you. So, DSA, I thank you for being part of your family. I thank you for taking me on board. And God will bless you mightily, richly, abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Amen. Bridget. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Hey, oh, and before I forget, my birthday, I'm going to be 50 on the 16th of March. Okay. So I will call you because of the only thing I want... Right, to write me, just write me on the Facebook Messenger. We'll do that. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you so God much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> wow, 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 yes. Yeah. I need prayers. Apostle Paul said that people should pray for him uh, so that, you know, God will give him utterance. So I'm also asking that uh, all of you will keep on holding me in prayers because there's so much, so much opposition and so many people are against these things that I'm doing. So I'll be happy if you people will support in prayers. Okay? So, uh, we have some other callers, so we are going to welcome them. And um, yep, so keep on keep keep on holding me and my t our teams here. Like now, I have a new team, so they are still learning. Hello, 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 sir. Hello, sir. May God bless you. Who is, I mean, God bless you. Who for... is calling from where? Um, this is Olua Shei calling from the United Kingdom. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, yeah. once again, say thank you for being the vessel that God is using to transform the body of Christ. Um, you are needed at this point in time because of the havoc that has been caused by so many of these people that are meant to bring light hmm. um, to the world. Taking Nigeria as a case study, I've always said it um, because I happen to be a teacher of the world myself. Okay. And I've always said it with my uh, fellow colleagues that it is so obvious that the gospel in Nigeria is not the gospel because the gospel transforms. It always transforms the environment. It transforms that nation. Now, this gospel, this prosperity gospel we have been talking about for the past 23 years, it has not translated into any national development. Yes. It has not transformed the country. The country is even getting worse. The GDP of the country keeps on going down. The value system of Nigeria has been completely be destroyed. And it's so obvious that the gospel is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because yes. the gospel of Jesus Christ, what it does, it transforms lives. It makes you... A better person. So, as I told people, I, I, I tell my friends and colleagues that if you are right thinking people, how come Nigeria, the crime rate in Nigeria is increasing? Yes, sir. How, how come humanity in Nigeria has died? So, there's, there's something wrong with the gospel. Yes, sir. And, you know, I, I was 
I was te- I was trying to tell people around that they should have the spirit of discernment. Yeah. They should analyze things so that they can clearly see the havoc that is being being wrecked mm-hmm. um, in in Nigeria. Yeah. Like I, t- I I I use an example. I said. Nigerians are not stingy. I mean, like, the average Niger- Niger- Nigerian person is a nice person. Yeah. The problem is the gospel. I said the same power that a pastor can use to make someone give his first month salary, imagine if they use that same power to tell the same people give to the poor, give yeah. to the needy. Yeah. Not imagine the kind of country we will have. Ah. Hmm. So... So, I, so I, I knew, I was telling people, Nigerians are loving people, but the problem is that they are being misled by many of these so-called men that they look up to. If these same men that can use that power to bamboozle them, brainwash them, to give to them, if they can tell them that, if they even come up and say, if you give to 50 people around you, the windows of heaven shall be opened away. Imagine they say that to every, all the... 80 million Nigerian Christians wow. that imagine the kind of country you have. Yeah. That find, find 50 people to sow into their lives mm. and you'll be blessed. Imagine if that's the kind of gospel that they are preaching. Yeah. You yeah. can imagine the kind of country you have. And, then the, that, and the other thing, sir, I said they should be rational. Now, they, they have been preaching prosperity gospel as far as I'm aware for the, over 23 years. Yes, sir. And I said the only people that